We are talking about polynomial functions and equations lesson number 10, and we're now dealing with polynomial functions with the leading coefficient other than one that's positive 1 or negative 1. Now in a previous lesson we introduced the unique factorization theorem. It states that every polynomial function of degree n greater than or equal to 1 can be written as a product of a leading coefficient c and n linear factors to get p of x equaling c times the first factor, second factor, third factor, and so on. Now this theorem then implies two important points for any polynomial function of degree n greater than or equal to 1. Point 1 is that every polynomial function can be written as a product of its factors and a leading coefficient c. Point 2, every polynomial function has the same number of factors as its degree. Now they can these factors can be real or complex and even may be repeated, but the number of factors equals the degree if you have all of them. Let's take a look at class example number one. We're going to start dealing with c values that are, could be anything other than 1 or negative 1. Class example one, the graph of a third degree polynomial function p of x, shown here in this graph, and the graph has integer x-intercepts and passes through the point 2, negative 24. It's labeled here. So we're going to try and explain why the equation of the polynomial, the equation of this polynomial function can be written in the form p of x is equal to c x x plus 1 x minus 3. Well, for 1, we notice that we have a leading coefficient c and there's 1, 2, 3 factors. Since it is a third degree polynomial function and there's three distinct factors, we know that there are, are, there's nothing more to write here, but the unique factorization theorem tells us that we can put this c here. Now the question is, why is it just x, x plus 1, and x minus 3? Well, when we take a look at this graph, we can notice that the x-intercepts are 3, so x minus 3 is a factor, 0, so x minus 0 is a factor, negative 1, which means x minus negative 1, or x plus 1, is a factor. So that's why we can write it like that. So three distinct factors. So we were looking for three factors because it was the third degree polynomial, and since we found three distinct factors, then we, we know that we're not looking for any more. And the unique fa factorization theorem says that it can be written that way, where p of x with a c oops, is equal to c, and then x minus a, x minus b, x minus c, something like that. All right. Let's look at part b here and use the point 2, negative 24, this one right here, to determine the value of c. Now why do we need a point in order to determine the value of c? Well we have this p of x is equal to c times x times x plus 1 times x minus 3. And here we can almost rewrite it to say that this p of x could be an output y, right? c x x plus 1, x minus 3. We're looking for this value of c. Now if we had values for x and y, then this would just become an equation with just one unknown c in it. So here if we use x, y coordinate as negative 2, tw oh sorry, not negative 2, 2, negative 24. In other words, x being the number 2 and y being negative 24, then we can substitute in this equation and we could find c. Well, let's do that. So negative 24, which came from right there, c times 2 times, and then here we have it's plus 1 and then minus 3. But what we're using is we're using the x value of 2, 2, and 2. This negative 24 also came from this coordinate as well. So negative 24 is equal to c times 2 times 3 and times negative 1. And so we have c times negative 6 is equal to negative 24, which tells us then the c value is equal to negative 24 divided by negative 6, which is positive 4. 
c is equal to positive 4. All right, can we write the polynomial in expanded form? So expanded form, we have the factor form here is using now the value of 4 for c. We have 4 times x, x plus 1, and x minus 3. And now we're going to expand this all out. So we have 4x, and let's put those two together. We have x squared minus 2x minus 3. And so you will get 4x cubed minus 8x squared minus 12x. And there is the expanded form of the polynomial. Let's attempt class example number two. We have a graph that represents a polynomial function of a lowest possible degree here. So that means if we're talking about even multiplicities, we're going to use number two and so on. The intercepts are integers. So let's take a look here. So we have an integer zero there. It looks like negative two. And then integer zero there is at two. What else is there? So we have, it comes through. All right, so we have here, this looks like it is an odd multiplicity. Here, this looks like a multiplicity of 1. So it looks like we will have here, this has to be at least a multiplicity of 3. This multiplicity of 1, and we don't notice anything else that's weird about it. So I think we're, we have an overall degree of 4. So it looks like we're going to need here, this multiplicity of 3 here, this p of x can be written, unique factorization theorem says it's going to be c times x minus negative 2, so that's x plus 2. Multiplicity 3 means an exponent 3. And then we have x minus 2, because 2 is a 0, and it's multiplicity 1. So I'm just going to put a 1 there, even though we don't need to. Now, we need to find c here in order to find the equation of the polynomial function, which means that we need an xy coordinate in order to substitute values for x and y. So how can we find that? There is none labeled here. So what can we do? Well, here is one point. It looks like it's a it's a y-intercept. So even if we were to Look at the scale here, 5, 10, nope, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to get to 20. So each one is 4, right? So this is going to be negative 8. So that point right there is a y-intercept, but the xy-coordinate is 0, negative 8. Well, can we use this point? Yeah, it looks like we can use this point. We can use 0 for x and negative 8 for y. So changing this p of x into a y value, we have y is equal to c times x plus 2 cubed times x minus 2. And now what we're going to do is replace the y value with negative 8. And there's still a c there. x value of 0, we're going to replace with x with 0. So now we continue to solve. We have c times 2 cubed times negative 2. We have c times 2 cubed is equal to 8. And 8 times, well, let's just keep it simple here. So we have negative 8 is equal to c times negative 16. And so c then is therefore negative 8 divided by negative 16. So c is equal to 1 half, positive 1 half. All right, with that now, then can we put the polynomial back in factored form? We have p of x, which started as c times x plus 2 cubed x minus 2, is now in factored form is going to be 1 half times x plus 2 cubed times x minus 2. And here is our polynomial in factored form. So you can see here, p of x is equal to 1 half substituted for c times x plus 2 cubed times x minus 2. So an important point is, in order to find out that value of c, 
we needed to find an xy coordinate that would work within the graph. Now, it wasn't labeled in this example, but we were able to find one by looking at a y-intercept. Let's take a look at class example number three. We're going to determine the equation in factored form of a fourth degree polynomial function which passes through this one negative 12. Well, I think this is, let's just uh, highlight that one because that is the xy coordinate that we will need perhaps to find c later on. Here it also says it's tangent to the x-axis at 2, 0. What does this mean? This key word of being tangent right at 2, 0 means that at that point then it probably has a multiplicity of degree, even degree. So if we're talking about Boas, it could be 2 here. Could be, and it's not 4 because it, there's also, it's also tangent here. So if it was already 4, we couldn't have another 0. So if it's tangent here as well, that means that this has to be a multiplicity of even degree. And since we have the sum of the multiplicities have to equal the actual degree of the polynomial, 2 plus 2, it means we can be very sure then that it's multiplicity 2 for each one of these. Okay, so P of X, unique factorization theorem says that we can say C times x minus 2. Multiplicity 2 is going to be squared and then x minus negative 3 and that's going to be squared as well. So let's write this again just to simplify things. x minus 2 squared, x plus 3 squared. Okay so now our job, let's find the value for c. And so we need an xy to help find C because we're going to sub values for X and Y. So here we have P of X, we'll make that into a Y. It's C times X minus 2 squared, X plus 3 squared. And there's no diagram to look at, but we can see right here that it gives us a point that the graph passes through. So there is our x and y coordinate. So we say x is equal to 1, y is equal to negative 12, and now let's make the substitution. Negative 12 equals c is what we want. We have this minus 2 squared. We have this squared, and the x value here is going to be 1, 1 in there. And I'm just making it colored so you can see that I got it from this information. So negative 12 is equal to c negative 1 squared times 4 squared. So negative 12 is equal to c times negative 1 squared is 1 times 16. So if c is times 16 is equal to negative 12. And so that means that c is equal to negative 12 over 16. Let's convert this c then to um, a simplified fraction. Mm -hmm. So this is negative 3 over 4. So the c value is negative 3 over 4. Now let's write the polynomial in factored form. So we have p of x is equal to c x minus 2 squared x plus 3 squared. But it's going to actually be p of x is equal to using the c value negative 3 over 4 x minus 2 squared times x plus 3 squared. Okay, so now you have the tools. Remember that in order to find c, we need to find an xy coordinate that the graph passes through, and it may not be obvious. It could be labeled, or it could be a y-intercept, or some other point. Okay, let's attempt class example 4 now. We have a fourth degree polynomial, p of x, that passes through the point 1, 2, and has zeros at negative 1, 0, 3 over 2, and 2. We have some important pieces of information that we can get from the question here. Since we know that it says it's a fourth degree polynomial, that means that the number of linear factors we're looking for is 4. Or in, in other words, there's four zeros that we could look for. These zeros could be real or complex, but we know that there's going to be four of them. 
And so it, since it's listed here, that there's four real numbers here as zeros, then it looks like we found all four. And in fact, because we found four different numbers, and it's a fourth degree polynomial, that means these are the only zeros that we're looking for, and each one has just multiplicity one. We should also note here, this point will come important to help us to know what C is. Now the unique factorization theorem, states then that p of x can be written like this. You have a leading coefficient, and then you have a bunch of linear factors, x minus a, x minus, well, it could be a1, a2, x minus a3, x minus a4, something like that. And here, because we have four zeros, each of these zeros can be, uh, can replace each of these a's. All right, well here we have, we have p of x then, we can say, if the zero's at negative one, then we can say that's one of the factors is x plus one. If it's at zero, then x minus zero is a factor. At three over two, that means that we have x minus three over two as a factor. And then here we have x minus a4 is 2, so x minus 2. But remember that this x minus 3 over 2, that we can really say that means that if we multiply by 2, it would be 2x minus 3 is a factor. Okay, with that in mind, now we'll just clean it up a little bit. We have c times x, x plus 1. 2x minus 3 and x minus 2. And now our job then is to find out what c is. Now here we have lots of unknowns. We have the p of x, we have the x's, and we have c's. But this point is where it comes very important. Because we know that it passes through this point, then we can say x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2. And when we replace this, p of x with a y, then now we can replace each one of these x's with the number 1 and this y with the number 2. So we have c, and this is a 1, a 1 plus 1, 2 times 1 minus 3, and a 1 minus 2. When we get that, we get c is equal to, there's a 1 there, this is 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, and 1 minus 2 is a negative 1 as well. So 2 is equal to 2c, which tells us that c is equal to 1. Well, that's very nice, actually. c is equal to 1. So now we can determine the equation. p of x, then, is going to equal c being 1. So then you have x, x plus 1, x, sorry, 2x minus 3 and x minus 2. Here is our equation. Let's now take a look at ex class example number 5. We have a polynomial equation with the following three roots. We have a negative 2, multiplicity 1, 1 third is a root with multiplicity 2, and 1 is a root with multiplicity 3. Now remember that the sum of the multiplicities is equal to the overall degree. So the overall degree here looks like it's going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is equal to 6. And so it looks like we have a degree 6 polynomial, which is an even degree polynomial. We also have this information here where it says that the y-intercept is 2 over 3. Well, if that's the case, then it looks like it's 0 as an x value and 2 over 3. There's the coordinate of the y-intercept. So we can say that's x, that's y. We'll use that later on to find the value of c. Okay, so the unique factorization theorem then tells us that the polynomial can be written as a leading coefficient with this x. And here, negative 2 is a root with multiplicity 1, so x minus negative 2 and exponent 1 for multiplicity 1. And then the next one, it says, one third is a root. So we really we're saying x minus one third, 
with an exponent 2. But remember that this x minus 1 third can be thought of as this 3x minus 1 as a factor. So the next one here is x minus 1. Multiplicity 3 means it's an exponent 3. And so here we have the general equation. And now we can think, OK, if we said that this was y is equal to c times x plus 2, x 3x minus 1 to the exponent 2, and then you have x minus 1 to the exponent 3. And now we need an xy coordinate to determine what c is. In order to find c, we need to know the values of x and y. And here it is. The value of x and y comes from this. And we have x is equal to 0, y is equal to 2 over 3. So let's make that substitution. 2 over 3 equals c. And then we have our 0 plus 2, our 3 times 0 minus 1, all squared. And then we have 0 minus 1, and that's cubed. OK, so I'll just go over that for a second there. 2 over 3 then is equal to c times 2 times negative 1 squared and negative 1 cubed. So this is going to be 2 over 3 is equal to c times negative 2. So to in order to solve for c, then we can say c is equal to 2 over 3 divided by negative 2. Well, this is 2 over 3 times negative 1 half. We can see this cancels out. We have negative 1 third as c. So c is equal to negative 1 third. And now we can use all this information to put back into the original equation. We have px of x is equal to negative 1 third x plus 2, 3x minus 1 squared, and x minus 1 cubed. And there is our equation. All right, so we found then that what we need to do is we need to use the zeros to find the factors of the polynomial in factored form. Then we need to find c by using an x and y coordinate. That x and y coordinate can be given to us as a coordinate, or we could be told some characteristic like the y-intercept. Use that to find c. Find C, plug everything back into the original equation, and there is the equation. All right, so you are ready for your assignment. Work on that, and I will see you in class.